You're working 12, 16 to 18 hours a day. Did people treat you different once they knew who your father was? All right, so I had a funny experience, right, when I first got there. Before I got to Clark, you know, like, when you graduate high school, you about to graduate, just saying, yeah, they always do that. Senior class, whatever school you going to today, like, you got to wear your hoodie or something. So I had my Clark hoodie on. You said you worked at Tyler Perry Studios. A month, two months. And you left. Like, yeah, you didn't get fired or none of that. But, like, for the viewers in the outside world, like, that's like a dream job. How is it that somebody can go through depression like you after everything that you learned? Depression don't got no look. Like, it really, we don't know what the, you might go on a binge of just f***ing a lot. Depressed, you don't know that. You might overcook yourself with just always working, hustling a lot. Like, you feel me? Like, I got this book I read. It was like, homicide is how we flip suicidal impulses. Are you feel me? So, mm -hmm. now you think about it, I had to sit back. I'm looking at it, right? You look in the hood, right? Once again, you already know what it is. Podcast Central. Coastal Chronicles NYC. I'm your boy, Tank Sinatra. A.K.A. Taino Domingo. A.K.A. Call Me Anything But Late For Dinner. I don't know what y'all thought, man, but you know what's getting, you know what's about to happen, though. But I got to talk to my man real quick, my brother, Activation King. Jen Star, talk to me, baby. What's going on, man? Another week, another episode. You know what I'm saying? We Numbers is up. Shout out to the to the, to the new sponsor, Red Bull. You know what I'm saying? Sponsors are coming through early. You know what I'm saying? They, they, they hitting that email crazy. Yeah. Not the DM, the email. Facts. You know, then, bags you know, is in the email, not in the DM, though. Then it's always big Duce vibes, because, you know what I'm saying, we in the, we in the Duce lounge. Listen, man. You know what I'm saying? If we do say so ourselves, you know what I'm saying? But um, let's get to it, brother. What's All up? right, let's get to it, man. Let's get to our guests, man. You know what I'm saying? We got royalty in the building, man. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So our next guest is not just repping Yonkers, but he also carving out his own lane in music and business. This man is a creator, entrepreneur, and now podcaster, who's both fresh and authentic with undeniable talent. Coming up, he was surrounded by some of the realest influences. He got his hip-hop royalty in his blood. Yeah, his pops is none other than legend. Jada Kiss, favorite rapper's favorite rapper. Music has always been in his blood. And I think we got another one. We like in the monologue. It was only a matter of time before he went for it. He didn't stop there though. He went and got his degree in psychology from Clark Atlanta in 2018. You already know, HBCU. And then he went into business with his pops and granddad. Together they launched Kiss Cafe in 2022, lending 40 years of family experience and the coffee game. In 2023, he gave us the heart of the North. His debut project that's a straight look into his life as an artist. It's hip hop, it's raw, it's all him. Not only that, he's now part of Joe Button Podcast. Whether in the boardroom or behind the mic, he's a force to be reckoned with, proving that you can balance business and artistry at the highest level. So without further ado, let's give it up uh -huh. for the artist, podcaster, businessman, calls himself Jon Snow, really J1. Holla at me, my boy. So, 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 so. Going. How's it going? How's it going? Thanks for having me. Well, I ain't gonna that was now, the brother. best introduction I've ever received. I ain't Woo! gonna lie. I, I I done a lot of interviews. Ain't nobody ever introduced it Cheers like that. That. That, was the, that, was that. that was elite. That was elite. That was elite. Okay. That was elite. Listen, Thank brother, you. I'm gonna keep it a hundred with you, my boy. Like I told I told my brother before you got here, right? I was like, yo, I love his energy. You understand? what I'm saying like people have told you before, but I'm a I'm a continue with the trend. Like you got an old soul. <laughs> Thank like, you. Like for real, B. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it exudes whenever somebody like meets you, like you could tell. Like your generation is different. Appreciate it's a bunch that. of weirdos. Facts. But out of all those weirdos, like you the you the diamond in the rough. And I'm Appreciate not just it. saying that because of who your father is, but you know what I'm saying? We're gonna get into that later on. But for the people that don't know your story and things like that, let's just start from the beginning. You know what I'm saying? Let's 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 get into how how you became to be who you are right now today as a man. Talk talk to the people how you grew up. You know what I'm saying, things yeah. of that nature. Um, all right. So what? Uh, I'm 27. I just be 28 this year. So everybody, you know, my pops like they started out bad boys, rough riders, all of that. You feel me? But the music industry then ain't what it is now. Like now you see niggas and their kids having. Nigga might got a Rolex on five years old, six years old, all that. That wasn't it for us. Like you feel me? My pop's crib, the crib he grew up in, the crib I grew up in. If we wasn't there, me and my mom was on the south side at my with her moms, me, her, my aunt, my grandmother, my uncle, his wife in the crib, my cousin EJ. Like, you feel me? So I had a regular upbringing. Like, 
I might have had a little more, but I had a regular upbringing for the most part. Like, my man Dirt right here that came in, like, he watched me grow up from the same block, same everything. Like, you feel me? So, my life was regular. Niggas be thinking it was this all extravagant. It was like, nah, my shit was real regular. My pops just was who he was. Like, and I feel like if niggas listen to his music, you see his life was really regular. He probably was still mostly accessible to most artists from his generation. So, it's like, it wasn't nothing crazy. It's a lot of misconceptions about me. I don't really be caring about them. Yeah, that's why that's why I asked you, because, you know, outside looking in, people always think, like, Silver Spoon mm -hmm. and all types of shit like that. You know what I'm saying? So, growing up, like, what what was, what was like, I want to say, like, did you see, did you see your future the way it is now? Or, like, what, what was you like, like a kid? Like, what was you like? Or, when, or put it to you like this, when, when did you know your father was Jada Kiss? Put it to you like that. I think I realized that young, like, watching videos, hearing his music on the radio at probably, like, two, three years old. But it ain't mean nothing crazy to me. Like, it was always just like, that's my pops. He always went, he a rapper, like. But I wasn't looking at it from a financial standpoint, like, oh, this that's just like, oh, that's my pops, that's what he do. You feel me? Because when he ain't doing that... He outside, he on the block with it. his friends, my uncles and shit. It was regular shit. It wasn't like all this, that. But did I vision my life like this? I low-key kind of like manifest everything how I want life to go. Like I always sit at some point like, damn, this this was going to happen. This is how it's going to go. And it's going to go like this. And he, what, last night? Last night or this morning, I probably was sitting there. I was on the phone with this thing, I think. I was like, yo, I am, I'm really rapping right now. Like, I always used to say, like, I wanted to rap. But it's like, nigga, really rapping right now. Like, at a high level. And it's like, it's motion and traction behind it. Like, so for me, it's like, it threw me off for a little bit. Because it's like, damn. So I'm how really was that? that? I think I wrote my first rap. Probably like five, six years old. That shit was trash. Then I start really rapping. Like, wanting to rap, rap. Like, during the fucking... 50 Cent Rough Rider and 50 Cent D Block G Unit Beef. Like around that time, I wanted to really rap. And I think the first song I ever recorded might have been in like the summer program camp shit, KP. Fucking, um, I was like probably nine, 10 years old, first shit. And then from there, it's like on and off. Like, you know, you get the computer, laptop, you figure out how to do it, you do it. But it was always them little shits niggas doing a block, like them type of records. It was never no like, I'm a rap, rap. Like, well, all my friends always be like, yo, nigga, you could rap. Like, if you just sit there, sit still and just rap for real, for real, and practice and, and just do it, you kill niggas. I ain't never do it. Then one day I was just tight. I was like, I'm going to the studio. And from there, it was just locked in. So do you feel, now, now that you brought that element up, obviously you started, like you said, you started young, but then, you know, when you're young, you're just toying with it. Yeah. Because, you know, you're trying to get the feel. Your pops is who he is. When you got older and you got to that age, Kiss is just not a regular artist. Yeah. So being that you're his son, is there like a pressure on you? Like, yeah, my your pops is bar. Like he set a high bar, bro. So do you do you do you get any type of like for yourself, like any pressure, like, damn, I gotta this nah. is my pop, so I gotta come with it. Like Pardon. Nah, I used to think that. I think that's why I avoided rapping for dumb long. But then after a while, I was like, Yo, fuck it. Like, you feel me? I, for me, I set a hard bargain on myself. And I'm so critical of myself because, like, I'm a fan of hip hop more than, and, like, I love music. R&B, blues, jazz, all of that rap. I love music. But hip hop, I'm a harsh ass critic. Like, I think everybody trash. I don't think nobody nice. I'm unamused by shit niggas be saying. Be like, oh, that was it. Like, you gotcha. feel me? So when I get in there, for me, it's like, nigga, like, you gotta say that shit. Another nigga might not like it, but when he sit down and he put and he read it, like I always look at it like that. Like when you sit down and you read it, put it side by side next to somebody else and you read it, it'd be like, damn, you could imagine what's being said. Like you could visualize it. Like that's one of my biggest things. Like as long as niggas could visualize it. Or if nobody can say, nah, that nigga's lying. And I did my job. Like, you mm -hmm. feel me? Like, a lot of niggas, we got this thing, like, my pops, my old heads, all of that. Like, niggas say something in the song, it might be fire. Be like, that nigga lying, bro. Like, that nigga, <laughs> <laughs> that nigga lying. <laughs> like, you feel me? Like, so long as niggas don't be like, niggas be like, yo, nah, like, 
that nigga dead serious. Like, and my friends would tell you, I always tell niggas, if you can make it out of Yonkers, you can make it anywhere. Mm, like, yeah, that's the And I over. really grew up in Yonkers. Like, my shit wasn't like, I'm I'm saying I'm from Yonkers. Like, I really grew up in Yonkers. Like, yeah. fucking Walburton, Woodworth Ravine, Cottage, fucking the whole north side, the south side. Grew up on Riverdale. My cousins lived over there. Elliot, like, I'm really from, like, Are Yonkers. Are you still in Yonkers? Like, yeah, like, you feel oh, me? So like, you, you, you feel okay, me? Like, I'm yeah. out of Yonkers now, but... Nigga, I just came from Yonkers, like you feel me? Gotcha. Like yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. really Excessible. from Yonkers, like you feel Excessible. me? Like my like those is my like niggas know me in Yonkers, like my whole family's from Yonkers. You feel yeah. me? Like so like nigga, if uh, niggas in Yonkers could be like, yo, nah, that nigga dead serious, like he ain't lying, like I'm good, I don't care what nobody else said. Nigga, could, nigga, I get on a podcast, or some nigga be like, your life is that way, I'd be like, yo, bro, I ain't arguing with y'all niggas. Yeah, you, you know what like, you want to believe. If I was lying, niggas from somebody from Yonkers, Yonkers don't like niggas. We don't support niggas. Niggas nah, say oh, that niggas pull, lying. Pull up bro. on you, yeah, especially, yeah, with, like, that, especially, especially now with, with that phone. Media. Exactly. Yeah, with social media, like you can't get away with nothing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. A nigga from Yonkers ain't jump in the comments, argue with me. Yeah, or say that niggas lying. It's always a nigga that I don't know from nowhere. It happens. It's, you know, it's, it's it's part of the game. Unfortunately, this this social media gave people that never had a voice before a voice. The niggas that was quiet in a the barbershop. There you go. Back there. Yeah. But your, your um school days, right? Mm hmm So That's crazy. I just watched that movie on the flight to Vegas. Wake up. That's my shit. <laughs> That's one of the first DVDs uh, my mom's ever bought me. Super hard. That that me and me ain't gonna get into that. But bro, so in school, right? When did when did like the people start did people treat you different once they knew who your father was? All right, so I had a funny experience, right, when I first got there. Before I got to Clark, you know, like, in high school, when you when you graduate high school, you about to graduate, you're seeing, yeah, they always do that. Senior class, whatever school you going to today, like, you got to wear your hoodie or something. So I had my Clark hoodie on. Like, I end up, crazy enough, I end up going to a high school. I went to, I went to prep. Like, I end up going there, me. I was in there with Justin, Mariano Rivera kids, the Maras, like, you feel me? Like, but for me, school was funny because I'd go to school. I ain't do nothing that everybody else did, did. Like, them niggas is going to parties. They pulling up in Audis, all sort of crazy shit. Like, I'm going back to Yonkers. Like, I was just going there for school. But home was here for me. So when I first got to Clark, they had made a whole thing. They put me on I, on the IG, like, Jada, his son coming to Clark or whatever. Woo, woo, woo. So when I left to go to school, my family actually flew in, like, my grandparents, my grandfather, oldest sister. Like, it was, like, a whole thing, like, because niggas from my family don't go to school. Like, it ain't a thing. My oldest cousin, Shay, went to school, but niggas don't go to school. So I was in my room one day in my dorm, just chilling, laying there. What, freshman year? Yeah, and campus security came up. Like, they like, yo, you got to come to, um, not campus security, campus police. They like, you got to come to the precinct. What the fuck is happening? They like, yo, like, um... No, your pops high profile. Woo, woo. We done had other celebrity kids who went to the school or went to Morehouse. People try to bother them. Like, Yo, bro, I ain't worried about none of that. I'm here. I'm good. Like, you feel me? I got family and shit over here on MLK. I'm good. Like, they got this whole thing when you first get to Clark or the AUC period. Don't be on MLK after a certain time. I like, tell nigga, bro, we out. I'm going to MLK, man. We good. Like, and that was my whole shit. So then I'm sure people was trying to be weird or like, Chicks was trying to get my attention, but I wasn't on that. Like, I had a group of friends from Philly, all girls, like five of them. Morehouse or? or nah, eight, Clark. Right. Um, we They was like, because we all ended up being psych majors together. They was like, right, yo, yeah. like, yo, be careful. Like, the girls in the dome talking about, yo, that's Jada, his son. We want to fuck with him. We're going to try to trap him. Like, and those just became, like, that's my family. Like, my sisters. Like, Hell that's yeah. who I locked in with. And then my other friends came gradually. But niggas ain't treat me. Niggas seen I was cool. I'm just J1. Like, all that shit for me is out the window. I actually don't like leading with who my pops is and none of that. Because then there's a perception and a perceived notion people have on you. Like, you feel me? One bad day or you look disheveled or shit ain't how it should look in the public eye. That perception. Yeah, like niggas is like, you feel me? So I like to be on what I'm on. And then... When Be with J1 out. instead yeah, of J like Jadakin's son. Exactly. Yeah, I got you.